Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 6. Today we're going to be reviewing Episode 18, also breaking it down, talking about Godspeed and everything that happened in this episode. This episode was one of the best episodes this season, definitely up there, easily top 3, probably like number 2 or something. I'll have to go rewatch some of the episodes, but I really, really enjoyed it, and it was so relevant and this episode really did touch me, but also it was really fun as in regards to Godspeed and there's a whole new mystery to talk about. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so yeah, like I said, this episode was really, really, really good. I loved it. So as you guys know, I'm a big fan of Godspeed. I don't think they've done a very good job with Godspeed so far, but I appreciated what they did in episode 1 this season because I knew that they were setting up for something and they were setting up for this episode and what's to come in the future, which really excites me and I'm sure it really excites some of you guys. We'll get to all of that as we go down chronologically throughout this episode. So right at the start we get Barry, he runs, at first you're like, is this Godspeed? You kind of hear some of the Speed Force energy, you hear the lightning, but it turns out it was Barry. And so he shows up at Joe's place, and Joe is obviously in witness protection, and he talks about Iris. He tells him that Iris is fake, Iris has been like this this whole time, you know. And Joe realises that he should have acted on this, he realised there was something wrong with Iris, and so this is a big revelation. That kind of makes sense to Joe. And also, the next few things that are said, remember Mira Singh is still out there in the real world somewhere, he's the only clone. The only mirror version of our characters that is still out there because you know Camilla and Iris are dead and you have Barry also trying to figure out how to do the artificial speed force while Cisco is trying to find a way into the mirrorverse so you have those kind of main things going on in the background but the main part of the episode is Godspeed and the threat that he poses to the city and the fact that he wants Barry's speed but also at the same time You've got Hartley, you've got Pi Piper working with Team Flash, and you have the whole Roderick situation, which I thought they handled really, really well. So yeah, Godspeed shows up out of nowhere, he just zooms in, he's running around, and they're like, oh, Godspeed's back. And he's like, you're the one that stopped the others, he's talking to Barry, and he says, I'm not impressed. So, at this point you realise, oh, he's talking about the clones, so they are all linked in the end, all these different clones, as we presumed, but this just confirms it on screen. And so he has these new powers, they are sort of reverse vibrations, I think is how they explained it, these sonic powers, and he has the ability to extract speed from any speedsters, and that's what he does later in the episode, which we'll get to, but at this point he does it to Barry, he's taken Barry's powers, but he is stopped by Nash Wells, and basically he threatens him and says basically, you know, you have to give up your powers or I'm going to rain death on the city, which we'll get to that moment as we head towards the end of this episode. But anyway, so they need Hartley's help. Barry goes to Hartley. They have this sort of mini fight. Barry doesn't fight back, but Hartley is still annoyed with him. We realise what happened to Hartley. Cisco explains that in this crisis version of Earth Prime, we know that Hartley's right hand man was put away by Barry, this guy called Roderick Smith who turns out to be his boyfriend, and so we have this recreation of the scene in season 1 where you have the Flash versus Pied Piper, but they're not just higher guns, it's someone personal to him, and Barry basically messed up his molecules or something like that, and he's basically phasing in and out of his body, and that is a big core reason as to why Hartley helps in this episode, and I think it really worked. Anyway, so at the same time, you've got Killer Frost and Ralph, probably the least interesting part about this episode, but anyway, it seems like she's going to leave. I think the original plan was for Killer Frost to leave from episode 19 onwards for the final few episodes, but I don't know if she's going to be gone because episode 19 is now the finale because of everything that is going on. So because things have changed, I guess she's not going away and she'll probably return next season, but this was just due to Danielle Panabaker's pregnancy and her, I guess, maternity leave. So that was what was set up, but I don't know if that's going to follow through. Anyway, so Barry is attacked by Pied Piper at his place when he goes to recruit him. He tries to recruit him, they're at Star Labs, they get Roderick from Mercury Labs, they try to do it, 
but it fails. And so, at the same time, we are in the mirror world, and we see reverse star labs. For a second, I was like, is my screen wrong? But then I realized, oh, we're not in the real world. Everything is reversed. The star lab signs are all reversed. But we see real Camilla in there, and you see Iris, and Iris is sort of breaking down. Her senses are being distorted and everything due to the condition you have when you stay in there too long in the mirror of us. And so she can't see straight. And they basically come together and make a plan about how they're going to get Sing. And then once they get Sing, they're going to get out of there. And somehow it has something to do with Cicada's dagger because Camilla has it at one point. I don't know what the relevance of that is, but they're going to be working together. And so it's good that we finally find out what has happened to Camilla because we haven't seen her properly, like the real version of her in the Mirrorverse ever since, you know, she was attacked you know, many episodes ago. Anyway, so Godspeed gives Barry one hour to give him what he wants, which is obviously his velocity, as he says in the episode, or basically his speed. Or death will rain down upon your city, is what he says. I thought Godspeed was really menacing, and this is the sort of villain that we need, and I love that they're setting up this mystery, because it's so intriguing. When you go to the end of the episode, you get the final scene of the episode with Eva, but it's not that interesting, it's just literally her going after her husband or something like that. And I just think comparing Godspeed to Eva right now, like Eva was fine. Now it's been dragged on a long way and I don't see the reason why we have to care about her and her husband's feud. Because it's supposed to be her against Team Flash. But, you know, it's in a different way. They captured Iris and everything like that. So that's why Team Flash is against Eva. And Eva, you know, basically doesn't have much interest in the Flash. So she doesn't seem like a villain that is threatening our team. She seems like a villain that is threatening something quite irrelevant. She's just threatening her husband who we don't even like. Like, I don't like him. He's just like a guy with some power. Then when you compare it to what happened with Godspeed in this episode, that is so much more interesting. You've got this mystery that is set up, so I really hope that this mystery continues into next season. Obviously, it's not going to be finished this season because episode 19 is the final episode, which is next episode. So, I'm really excited to see more of Godspeed and to find out about this mystery. So then we go to Star Labs and We've had this talk with Barry and Hartley realizes that Roderick is much closer to Hartley than he even thought. He thought he was just like a higher gun or something like that, but they are actually in a relationship. They are boyfriends. So Barry understands what Hartley is going through because, you know, he's missing Iris. He isn't able to see Iris and he hasn't seen the real Iris in such a long time. And Hartley hasn't seen him in years. So they're going through a similar thing and they end up teaming up against Godspeed and at this point, the alarms go off and Godspeed has taken a visit to Iron Heights and we see that he has killed and taken all the speed of every Godspeed. So the four Godspeeds that were locked up at Iron Heights that were sort of these clones and they make the weird noises and everything like that. We're thinking the whole episode this is the normal version of Godspeed but turns out it's not and we'll get to that in a minute. But he does kill these versions of Godspeed and I really like this moment. I thought it was very, very impactful because you can feel how powerful he is. He got into the meta wing that is dampened. It, you know, was just an example of his true power. So then you have the Flash facing off against Godspeed as he kidnaps these victims on the middle of the street. So he tells the Flash, you got one minute to come. Every one minute, I'm going to kill someone here. And so Barry uses the rest of his speed and he is chased by Godspeed and Godspeed is at Mach 5. He's running so much faster than Barry. But Barry knows the streets better and he is able to play him and Barry is reminded of how, you know, he was able to stop Roderick and what happened in that case. And he uses that knowledge against Godspeed and basically Barry gets slammed to the ground. He's getting beaten up by Godspeed all over the place. And at one point Barry's speed basically like freaks out, it glitches out, he drops on the big building and he is saved by Hartley and at this point Godspeed crackles with lightning he is a real god of speed and Barry uses all of his speed with Hartley both doing it together as they render Godspeed useless as he smashes into a car again his blood is blue it's different and apparently this is charged sound so it's not like his real blood but anyway it's a solution to what's happening with Roderick Roderick is saved and Hartley and him reunite 
and Godspeed is shaking and knocked out and he's put into Iron Heights. So it's at this point, once Hartley's gone and everything, that Barry reveals he went to Iron Heights and he interrogated Godspeed and he realised this isn't the real Godspeed. And as he recalls in this scene, we deserve your speed is a line that Godspeed said this version of Godspeed who we thought was the real Godspeed this whole episode. So the question is, who is we? So there's someone out there who is the real Godspeed but the question is, who is the real Godspeed and when will we see him? This mystery is a new mystery that started at the start of the season and will continue until next season and I'm so intrigued about everything to do with this. It's said that they want infinite velocity, this is the thing that they are trying to get and that's why they've taken all the Godspeed speed from Iron Heights and they were trying to take Barry's speed but Barry was able to thwart Godspeed this version of him and so he is just like the rest of them it turns out he begins to say very similar stuff to all those other people and begins to stutter and basically he just shuts down essentially so he is a clone even though this version of Godspeed could actually speak, he's some sort of different version of, you know, a Godspeed clone. And so that is where we leave Godspeed at the end of the episode. We've got this mystery lingering and I can't wait to find out what happens and I can't wait to theorize about this with you guys. So if you have any theories, let me know in the comments down below. When do you think we're going to see this Godspeed and who is this real Godspeed? And why does he keep on sending all these clones to get speed? Anyway, so let's move on. So Hartley and Barry make up and... Basically, they have this really, really enlightening chat together where Hartley basically tells him he has to believe that his world can change and that moment really, really touched me and it really rings true, especially to what's going on in the world out there right now. It just really cool to me and I really, really appreciated those moments and this continues with Barry's talk to Team Flash as he talks to the team about what they've lost and giving them hope that they're going to see these people because we have this love and everything we have is what makes us strong essentially together. So again, really, really touching me and I thought it was just so well done and so it's just something that couldn't be taken and yes they've lost a lot but they're never going to lose what they have. Barry talks about Eva and how she has never faced them head on and that's what's about to happen and this is a massive team flash moment. They're all like yeah we're doing this and so they come together as a fully fledged team and that is what they're going to do as we head into the finale which is supposedly a good episode to end according to the showrunner Eric Wallace and so you have all of that and right at the end of the episode Cisco realizes we can make this machine whatever machine they need and this is a way for them to get the people they love back you know from the mirrorverse and Cisco realizes there is something that he needs to get and he needs to go to this place where he has been before and this place is Atlantis he has been there on his travels and he's gonna return there I don't think we're gonna see Atlantis but it was such a nice reference I really appreciate it and it seemed like a very impactful moment where you're going to have him going to Atlantis, probably not going to be in that much of the next episode, but he's going to get that device, whatever it is, in order to defeat Eva. And so I just thought this episode was so good and it works so well as a whole. And the only sort of weird part of the episode was right at the end where it goes to the Flash logo and then the post credit scene is Eva in a chamber. I have no idea what it was, but she's in there and she just says, I'm coming for you, Joseph, as she talks to herself. It was just a bit weird because the whole episode was so good with Godspeed, with Hartley, with Barry, with them, all the emotions, everything worked so well but then you end on this very emotionless ending because you don't have that sort of connection to this villain and her saying I'm coming for you Joseph, I swear she said that about 50 million times already. It was a weird way to end such a great episode. But anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and if you are new, please be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos, and please be sure as well, in the comments, when you leave that comment, give me your Godspeed theories, give me anything you want me to talk about to do with Godspeed and this ongoing mystery, because it's so intriguing and I want to talk about this more. Let me know what do you think about all of this. Okay, so thank you guys for watching, I'll catch you guys later, goodbye. I see.